Hello and welcome to Top Realtors of Atlanta, sponsored by Commercial Capital Limited, the place to go when the banks say no for your commercial financing needs, and the Thai Fair Commercial Group with four locations and growing. They're your one-stop shop for all your commercial real estate needs. I'm your host, Brian Peart, the president of Commercial Capital Limited. We're excited to introduce you to some of Atlanta's top realtors. On every episode, I will be joined by some of the top realtors in our area to discuss the real estate landscape and the latest news and trends within the industry. Every month, we will release two new episodes, one show will focus on residential real estate while the other will concentrate exclusively on the commercial real estate market. On today's episode, we'll talk to some residential agents, Chad and Domine Reeves from Keller Williams Realty at Sugarloaf. Why don't you tell everyone a little bit about yourselves and, and uh, Keller Williams and what you do? Um, okay. So, you know, I got involved in real estate uh, roughly about 10 years ago. Both my parents have been involved in real estate for over 55 years. So, um, you know, KW was just a great opportunity for me to, to come in and, and um, you know, change the lives of a lot of agents um, that were there. And real estate is, is ever changing every day. Um, so I thought it was, you know, right up my alley. And I've been selling real estate for about 20 years. Uh, let's see, I started out as on a team. And then I purchased the team in 2006. Not a good year to buy a team, but that's what I did. <laughs> and I uh, just grew the team and uh, transferred over to Keller Williams in 2010. And I've just been growing my business ever since. And currently, I still run a team of agents. We sell about 100 homes a year. And uh, since November of 2020, I've also had the opportunity to help uh, run the market center at Ke- Keller Williams Sugarloaf with a team of what 474 agents right 476 now 476 right now so i run a team a business team of real estate and then i also manage a market center of 474 agents so you run all those mm-hmm. agents wow that's yeah impressive. that's together uh, together chad and it's i do interesting that. um that we work together and we're still running uh an entire billion dollar market center together every day yeah wow. so billion dollar that's market good. center and then I don't know. What did I do last year? $40 million in residential sales. Also. Look at you guys. Yes. And you still are, you know, friendly and, and like each other. We have How our moments. That? They've got us on opposite <laughs> sides of the building. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you. Well, that's great. So, you know, the market's, con- you mentioned change there, Chad. Um, the market's constantly changing. Um, you know, we've seen some difference with these rates rising. Why don't you tell us about what you're seeing in the current market conditions and inventory and transactions and those type things you know inventory is starting to definitely rise i think i mean we did have a lull with you know with i would say with new construction but you know you got to remember homes were flying off the market you know and that caused you know uh, an inventory shortage okay with that i mean you're selling a home in less than 48 hours um so that was that was really really a challenging time i think now is is more of a a skill-based market of where we're at um, you know, one of the things that you hear is the interest rates that rise, but mortgage rates may drop. And so maybe that's not always focused on, but mortgage rates dropping, um, I think, is, is something that you should always, you know, just check with your lender and, um, you know, make sure that you're pre-qualified in this market. Sure. Yeah. So the market has definitely softened since uh, I'd say we've pulled the break as of June 2022. It was a totally different market in April and May. And now we are. We are in a totally softening market. We're seeing prices decline about 10%, still well over where we were in 2021 because we appreciated about 20% in this area last year. So it's still a great market to sell and it's it's a great opportunity to buy. Buyers have many opportunities right now that they didn't have over the past two years. So you are seeing the beginning of uh, uh, some gradual decline here in in prices. uh, Yes, it is softening. And uh, that means as inventory is starting to rise, the buyer demand, I think, is what has the most changed. Uh, Rates are still, we're still, I don't know if we're under 5% as of today. You know, they change daily. Uh, But rates did take a, a dip when the feds announced their adjustment. And but prices are starting to soften. And when I mean soften, I'm I'm being 100% honest and telling you that if you listed your house for $500,000 towards the beginning of the year, you probably want to list it around 450 right now. Yeah. And that's just hard for people to absorb right now. They need to hear it and they need to know it. Uh, but what we're learning and we're consulting our agents around is what happened in this past two years, 2021, 2022, that was a byproduct of COVID, of bent up demand. And it's just not a market that we've ever seen. When we look at the data and we show our agents the data, 
what the market average was year after year was so different than these past two years. And now we just need to start going back to the traditional ways of selling real estate like we did in 2019. And we need to dust off all those tools that we used to use to sell houses and start implementing those things again and just getting back to a more normal, balanced market. Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing is interpreting the market. Um, I mean, we're seeing you know, multiple offers, $85,000, $100,000 over list price, and the homes were appraising because that was the demand at that point. Um, you know, and that was a lot last year. We're still seeing multiple offers. We're seeing probably four or five sometimes on homes, not 30, um, and a little bit different. But when Dom talks about that the homes, uh, the home prices are softening, it's coming back more to a, to a stable real estate market. Mm-hmm. Well, I think if, uh, you know, I know in my neighborhood, the, uh, the price that I I never thought the prices would get to the point where they got, yeah. and I don't think any um, of us did. Yeah. And and so even if it comes down some from where that peak was, it's still higher than I ever thought I'd be able to sell my home. So I'm still still way the way whether to do it or not. It's just we're happy my to help life, you with that. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's just when my life is ready for that next thing. You know, my daughter's going off in, right. you know, but, that's, but, that's a but it's a, we're it, having daily with it, it's a good market to, uh, um, buy as long as you can afford it with those, you know, the mortgage payments do change the right. game for some. And these are know. conversations that we're having with sellers and with our, with our top agents is the conversation that we're having. Because if you are planning to sell maybe in the next one year or two years or three years, Let's sit down and have a financial conversation to see what that may look like because rates are definitely on trend to increase. They were on trend to increase before COVID and that's where we're going again. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's just getting the public used to that and to know that if we could sell your house now and net you X and you can go buy something else with the rates still at five, would that matter even if prices do dip However, if the rates go up to seven or eight, what does that look for you financially? Well, you know, I, I've been in the mortgage business forever. Um, I remember back in 93 when I was in the business just, and the rates for the first time dipped below seven. And I'm on the phone with people, it's six and seven eights, you've got to refinance now. It's never going to be this low again, you know. And uh, it hasn't been, a you know, it was in the threes there for Ten so years, long. man. Yeah. So long, we was, just got all yeah. used to it. But, but historically, five percent is not horrid. No, um, not at all. You What's know, and seven point nine. It's historical is seven point nine. That's yeah. an average mortgage rate. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that I think that's the hard thing. And of course, you know, talking to our parents, they were in eighteen and nineteen sure. percent interest rates. Sure. I mean, we can't fathom that. That's a credit card. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, absolutely. My mom tells me that all the time. <laughs> Um, <laughs> it's all perspective. So it's right. all perspective, right? All right. So, w- what's projected here? Previous month's numbers. You know your agent count. You know, talk about you, you're managing all these agents. Maybe expound on, you know, what you're seeing amongst realtors. Is it? Are they making money right now? Is it still, you know, profitable for them to be in there? Is there enough transactions to, for everyone to make a little money? Or there definitely is enough transactions still for everybody to make money. Uh, we are, you know, we're having more business consultations than ever. We average about 80 to 90 business consultations a month with with agents within our market center and also agents outside of our market center because our role is to consult our agents inside of our market center. And sometimes that also means consulting agents, top agents outside of our market center and bringing back tools that they're using and then also then sharing tools and resources that we're doing within Keller Williams so that we can better our industry as a whole. And the conversations that we're having with agents today is definitely different than, say, a few months ago. Uh, But mostly it's around shaving their budget, watching their expenses, and then what they need to be doing now that they need to be doing more of. Maybe they used to talk to 20 or 30 people to get an appointment. Now they need to be talking to 50 to 60 people. We're teaching them and showing them what they need to refocus on because the grind is definitely going to be more you know, challenging. It's not going to flow so easily and they need to get back to the basics of selling real estate. Yeah. One of the interesting things that we talked about in our last, we do a sales meeting every Wednesday. And one of the, one of the biggest facts was, you know, over 2,400 homes were sold in Gwinnett County last month for every eight and a half transactions, a Keller Williams Atlanta partners 
sugar loaf agent was involved in. So mm-hmm. one out of eight. Yeah, one out of eight every transactions is done through our market center. Mm-hmm. So I mean, talking about grabbing market share, that's huge. And last month we sold 151 million dollars worth of real estate. So when you hear these conversations of, hey, there's nowhere for me to move to, there's no inventory, people are selling homes, it's just at the right time, what's for that particular person, all about perspective, and getting in front of as many people as you can. Yeah, really talking today to agents, because many agents have didn't get into the business, got in the business during COVID, many agents have not been through a shift like we have, and so just sharing our past experiences, learning to pivot faster, than we did in the past like we should go back and look back at the recession that we all went through in 2007 through you know 13 and if i can look back and say one thing that i wish i'd done back then was pivot faster and Mm -hmm. i had and i would have more fierce conversations with buyers and sellers things that they needed to hear that maybe i wasn't quite prepared to have back then i'm having those conversations now and we're teaching our agents how to have those conversations now to save people money I think that's a good idea. The um, that's something I tell all my people too. I mean, you got to be ready to pivot. Like the markets, I do commercial, so the market's still good in commercial, yeah. and and uh, you know, but but it can all crash tomorrow. It typically, doesn't Anything, commercial trend yeah. a little bit behind residential? Yeah, and well, and, and, and it can all different. crash tomorrow. Yeah, right. So so you got to be ready to pivot. But until it crashes, it hasn't crashed. So right. you've got to keep moving forward. You know, and and uh, I mean that's I think the almost any business that's the because every business is like what's coming next almost because i talked to hundreds of businesses right almost every business is what's coming next and right no one absolutely really knows and right. just, it, even it, if know. it doesn't crash at least our agents are prepared for it mm-hmm. and so okay maybe it doesn't crash but you made 50 contacts a day instead of 20 I bet you got more business from it. You'll come out ahead, you know, because so many, the thing is, look at that, look at the shift. When the market shifts and you've got a whole bunch of agents that are jumping into the market, once once you're doubling down and those agents are moving out of the market, because agents do get their license and then move out of the market, you know, and then right at that point, that's the peak time to grab all of that income and you're grabbing market share. That's right. Look at 2017, if you want to look at more of a, or in 2016, more of a stable market, I would say. Mm -hmm. 2019, it's... It's kind of teetering on that, but 20, 21, 22. That's crazy. Crazy years, but some of the best sales everybody has had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's and it's just an adjustment. It's a mindset adjustment. Those are we're having a lot of mindset conversations with our top agents, just talking to them about shifting their mindset and around the market that is to come, and preparing them today for what is coming, what is going to be coming here in the next few months. Right. And one of the things that I, I truly love about Keller Williams is our, our president, Mark King, we were in a mastermind with him back in June. And he said, typically in the past couple of years, you could be at any brokerage and truly be somewhat run a successful business. But that's going to change in six right. months, he told us. So mm-hmm. and I think he's right. Like mm-hmm. value matters. Uh, Skill set is going to matter. Name brand recognition is going to matter mm-hmm. and consistency. So who you align yourself with professionally is going to matter for the agent here in the next few months. So that lines up my next question. So why choose, why should an agent out there choose Keller Williams? Wow. Um, So here's the thing, you know, I've been involved in real estate um, 10 years. I've never seen so much opportunity, uh, you know, at Keller Williams Atlanta Partners for sure. I think um, the fact of the willingness to share between the leadership, our owner, Brian Fair, pours into us every single Tuesday. He keeps us abreast of what's happening in the market. Um, We have different lenders and attorneys that we use every single day, um, just providing the knowledge. Um, Domine mentioned the consulting appointments. Um, It's a skills-based market. So, you know, we're there. We're there every day. Sticks and bricks. Uh, Our sales meetings, we we probably have 120 in person. Um, Some, you know, yeah, 120 in person agents, probably another 50 online. But that's the value that we provide in every Wednesday, not just, you know, in person, but the consulting um, that we do. Um, you know, I, like I think said. a lot of it for me is the culture. You know, you don't, you know, uh, you said sticks and bricks and, yeah. and there's a lot of cloud based companies out there and they haven't really been around during the shifting market. So it'll be interesting to watch what some of the cloud base happens. But I can tell you from our our consulting appointments for, with agents outside of our company, uh, 
they're just missing out on value pieces, people pouring into them, and they're coming to meet with us to learn what they're not getting at their current brokerage. Value, culture is gonna matter. It, it, they don't know, you don't really know you need Keller Williams and all the value pieces until you do. And so from somebody that left, I left a brokerage in 2010 because they weren't pouring into us, and they were a top company, they weren't pouring into us at the time, and I was a top agent in their market center, and I was looking for something more. And when I went over to Keller Williams, I realized with the culture of sharing, like top agents sharing everything that they're doing to new agents that are coming in, instead of shutting the doors and locking it and keeping everything a secret, that culture of sharing and giving helped propel me. And I, I am confident that I'm still in this business today because of that culture and the giving. Some, I didn't know I needed Keller Williams until it was almost too late. And I definitely do know that I'm in business today because I got with a company that poured into me when I didn't know how to navigate through what we were going through. It's a business consultations. I mean, you'd be surprised how many, we go over P&Ls. That is that. That is our main focus. So oh, so when you're talking business consultation, you're mm -hmm. talking about with uh, another agent. Yeah. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and you just said something about P&L. So why don't you walk me through that business consultation real quick? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you know, first off, we would already have their multi-year trends pulled up. So we're looking at, um, most importantly, right now I'm looking at units. Okay, I don't need to look at sales price. I don't need to look sure. at your volume or gross commission income because all that's been so inflated mm -hmm. in the last three years. So I wanna look at units. So that's a true mark right. um, really of, of where your business is going. Um, then next thing, when you're looking at a ship, we wanna talk about what you're spending money on. Okay, what's driving, yeah, what's driving your business forward? Okay, are there things that we can cut out of that? Okay, um, and that's not necessarily something that's on everybody's radar. Sometimes we have to bring their admin into it. So we may do something called a tech audit and we may look and, and, and go through their process because you're, you're really looking for a 30, 30, 30, 30, 40, okay? And so you Tell want 30, 30, 30, 40, yeah, 30, yeah. 30, 30% <laughs> cost of sales, 30% of, of, of expenses and 40% profit. And that's the one thing. You can put anybody on stage that says, I did 10 million in volume. Tell me about your profit. Well, we're but what, to you what's about your cost your of sales? That's what you pay your buyer's agents, what FMLS fees, expenses that you don't. Marketing. Yeah, marketing. Uh, no, ex marketing's no, expense. It's expensive. Cost yeah. of sale is like your team agents. So many top agents run teams. So you run all the money through the team lead, but then they div divvy they out. They it out. Yes. Okay. So, so you're basically your sub agents or whatever underneath. Yes. That's cost your 30% and yes. then 30% marketing. Sure, and so like and the conversation. Yeah, Got normal it. real estate agents, you should pay yourself a salary of $36,000. Sure. People but, miss but that. But talking, like I was just talking to a top agent the other day, and she had 30%, and we were going through a P&L because we're trying to make sure that she's getting at least 40% profit. And she was right on with her 30% expenses, but her cost of sale was under 30%. Now, this was an agent that is looking to get out of the business soon. And so from somebody that also you know, transition from to seventh level with my team running without me in the day to day because I'm running the market center. I know how important it is if somebody's considering getting out of the market eventually that she needs to get her cost of sales up to 30% because right now that means she's doing majority of the work. She needs to pay her people more. She needs to yep. pay her people more. She needs to get that more people doing more business and she needs to pull back. So is this when you're trying to recruit them in or is this something that Both. is ongoing mm -hmm. even Both. when they're there? Yeah. So you're constantly tweaking constantly meeting yeah yep ah oh, that's great yeah so we will like when we're meeting with people outside of our market center because like it is our job to bring back information to our agents as well that to help them grow and then we share what our top agents are doing with outside agents because at the end of the day it helps the industry if we're all better agents we're all better for it our industry thrives uh, so, but when we learn things and then we're talking to them about what we're talking to our top agents that, that are doing, they want to know. A lot of it is what it's leverage. More of the Conversations yeah. are around profit, are around leverage, um, time management, right? Those are majority of our conversations, how we can help them in each facet of their business to just be more efficient. Yeah, it sounds so. like a mastermind. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so... Um, how about with service? You know, why are you guys different with service, um, both to, I guess, the clients and also the, the people that you're recruiting in, your agents? So um, I think we've got to go down with knowledge on contracts. Wouldn't you agree on that? I think you're talking about skill-based market right now, um, we train so hard with all of our agents and make sure that they're up to date 
because we're we're actually teaching on Wednesday about how to how to save the deal. What do you do to keep the deal together? You know what's happening right now. So That's part of your value proposition because most agents' value proposition over the past couple of years, you know, has whoever answered the phone the fastest got the lead. You know, that's no longer the value proposition. Your value proposition is being your pricing expert, understanding that market and being able to convey that so that the public understands pricing and that you're a pricing strategist and then what you're doing to keep deals together and your negotiating strength. But the value, you know, in, in service that we provide to the public is top notch. We have top notch technology. Um, we are cutting edge with um, virtual assistance and things that we're doing on social media and the virtual world. You know, we're Gary Keller says by in three years we all need to learn how to sell homes in the metaverse, and that is something that we are we are learning it's how crazy to as do. It I know yeah. it sounds crazy. You know, that's not anything I want to know, but <laughs> that is something that he is showing us and teaching us how to do. One of the great things about Keller Williams is we have over 180,000 agents, so. Gary gets to mastermind with agents that are selling 4,000, 5,000 homes a year. He masterminds every month with the top agents in this company and outside of this company. And he has data for years and years because we've been the number one real estate company, the largest real estate company. He knows what's happening five years ahead. Gary operates five years ahead of us. And he is constantly pouring into us, and we're we're always like, whoa, whoa, that's too much. But he operates at a whole different level. So what he pours into his leadership helps us take our agents with with us faster. I think you all can agree that you you got to have a foundation in real estate. If you don't have a good foundation, you're done. Like you're done in three years, and a lot of people get out of the business in three years. So, you know, we've got a leadership team in our off, office of eleven people. So, you know, you walk into our brokerage, you're, you're not left out on an island. There's always something going on. The training calendar is there. Um, somebody's always there to help. Um, you can text us, call us. We work seven days a week. And I said, and there's, there's four or five people on our team that work seven days a week. We'll answer your text. We'll answer your call. That's why we're there. That's mm-hmm. the most important thing, I think, is, is getting that foundation because there's nothing more, I, I guess, um, you know, almost aggravating than trying to call your, your broker or somebody on the leadership team and you can't get in touch with them. Yeah. You know, they need help. You can only work seven days a week because you're married. That's yeah. how you're pulling. We that do. Off. We do. Um, yeah. we I ain't alternate. pulling that off in my house. We do I'm alternate weekends. We do alternate weekends. <laughs> and and we yeah, do. we do. We, we do. had to learn how we to. Do. All right, good. Well, listen. So um, let's put on our crystal ball here. Six months, a year from now, what do you guys see in the residential market? I like to end. Yeah. All the interviews with that question. Well, you know, if you're coming off one of the best years in real estate right now, if I said if we were flat again in 2023, it'd still be a banner year, right? Mm -hmm. I mentioned we sold $151 million worth of real estate out of our market center last month, Mm -hmm. 1.4 billion last year. So I would take flat. I'll also take an increase. Um, Inventory, I think that'll be on the rise. I think you'll see some some uh, the supply chain will kind of open up so we may have a little bit more on new construction I, would I think. think it we've had a great two years of a run and I think it's going to take us two years to correct so I think we're going to see a correction for two sure. years okay and correcting you're talking more of a going, stable uh, going down to the going stable down going down just think back to 2019 we're running this thing well one we're running a couple of things in our market center right now no agent left behind and that's, that's about taking <laughs> okay. all our agents yeah. because, you know, half of the agents got out of the business in the last recession. So we, we don't want that to happen again. And then we're also doing back to the future, um, back to 2019. Like, let's start learning what we used to do in 2019 and get all those tools and systems implemented in our agents, in our agents business so that they can start operating at a regular market where there's more of a balanced market homes sitting on the market five to six months. I know that sounds terrible, yeah, but stable real estate markets, four months. So you may not see an yeah, escalation clause or, that's or, normal, or anything though. like that in a while. That's normal though. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, why don't you uh, tell everyone how to reach you um, for this thing and yep. we'll wrap up. Yeah. So uh, you can get a hold of me, Domine Reeves at Domine. D-O-M-I-N-A-I at KW.com. Our market center phone number is 678-775-2600. And you can get in touch with me, Chad Reeves at KW.com. Um, same way, 678-775-2600. Yeah, call us anytime. We're happy to help. 
Thank you for joining us, guys. Thank um, you. Sounds Thanks, like if you're an agent out there, you need to you need to call these guys. They do. Yeah. We're happy to help. We're happy to talk to you. So uh, I want to thank you again for joining us on Top Realtors of Atlanta, presented by Commercial Capital Limited and the Thai Fair Commercial Group. We offer new shows on the second and fourth Tuesday of every month, so keep an eye out for those. You can find us on Apple iTunes, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or whatever wherever you enjoy your favorite podcasts. You can also enjoy the show anytime by visiting Business Radio X, selecting the Gwinnett Studio, and then clicking on Top Realtors of Atlanta. Thank you again to all my guests. On behalf of Commercial Capital and the Thai Fair Commercial Group, I'm Brian Peart, and this has been Top Realtors of Atlanta on Business Radio X. Mm-hmm.